Bible. All right, as you take your Bibles, uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 9. We'll finish up that chapter tonight, and um, we're going to look at uh, a passage of Scripture that uh, people have all kinds of ideas about. We're going to try to see maybe you have an idea um, uh, about it yourself, And uh, but here we're going to First of all, see uh, Noah's sin, and then we're going to see uh, Ham's uh, response and his sin uh, there. And of course, we're going to see uh, what God says about uh, the, the uh, punishment uh, that takes place as far as what God uh, does for, for Ham's sin. Pick up our reading in Genesis chapter 9 and verse number uh, 18 Genesis 9 and verse 18 the Bible says uh, and the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham and Japheth and Ham is the father of Canaan there are three sons these are the three sons of Noah and of them uh, was the whole earth overspread then and Noah began uh, to be a husbandman planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. Shem and Ham, I mean Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their uh, both and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem and of Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in, tent, and dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Let's pray. Father, grateful for the reading of your word, bless the preaching of your word. Help us as we participate together to learn uh, about uh, this passage of scripture and about ourselves. And uh, help us, uh, God, to uh, know your will, do your will, and just follow you daily. We know this is a moment-by-moment, moment, uh, uh, really minute-by-minute minute life. And we have to be careful. We have to watch ourselves and uh, just uh, keep ourselves uh, your love and, and allow you and your spirit to, to work in our hearts and lives daily. We thank you and praise you that we you know, can walk with you and we can uh, see you do this work in our hearts and lives. And so we pray you bless us tonight with your presence. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, of course, we just read the scriptures and so there's a lot of interesting things here in this past scripture that uh, we're probably not going to all figure out. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, um, in the very beginning of this, uh, what I want to say about, because I titled the message tonight, Noah's Choice of Sin, and um, what we need to recognize, all of us need to recognize, is no matter how long we live, and of course Noah lived a long time, didn't he? Uh, and uh, no matter how godly we are, uh, how much uh, we've done for the Lord, and the Lord's done for us in our lives, um, anything can happen. To us, anything. So we don't need to look again. I found I've done this in my own life. Uh, others have done it in their lives. Looking at other people in their sin and what they do is not what God wants us to focus on. He wants to focus on Him and on ourselves and understanding that at any moment uh, we could do the same thing. We could make a choice that we should not make in our lives, and uh, we need God twenty four seven. But first, He goes into verses. Um, 18 and 19, and he just, again, reiterates to us and to the world, really, uh, that, that these are the sons of Noah and the only sons of Noah. Uh, as other people might try to say that Noah had more sons and this, that, and the other, and, but it's not true because this is what the Bible tells us. These were the three sons of Noah, the only sons that he had. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, also what we need to understand, and, and we'll talk about this as we get into 
uh, the, the Canaanites, and, 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 and well, let's read it first. He says, and the sons of Noah, <clears throat> excuse me, went forth from the ark. They were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Did that catch your attention? Or not catch your attention? I mean, it didn't say that, it didn't tell us, you know, that uh, it didn't tell us Shem and Japheth's, you know, uh, sons. Didn't mention them. Now, we're going to see in chapter 10 uh, some choices that these uh, particular uh, 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 men and their children made. But it does say that, that, that Ham is the father of Canaan. It's very interesting. And there's a reason for this. We need to understand that who's writing this? Now, we know the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. Who's, who wrote this? Moses did. Now, <clears throat> was Moses there? No, no, Moses wasn't. I mean, okay, Mo Moses wasn't on the ark. <laughs> you know, no matter what a, a movie might tell you, they might tell you Moses was on the ark. No, Moses wasn't there. Moses has got this from, from God. God has given him this, and, and uh, of course, uh, we, we understand that he, he wrote these uh, first, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, five books. And so he's, he's, I believe personally he's writing this and, and because during uh, Moses' day, uh, the Canaanites uh, were, you know, vastly uh, ruling and, and, and doing all kinds of things. And, and so he's really going back here and showing us some things and that what, what God says and what God says will come to pass with the Canaanites as far as the serving and all that. Anyway, we got to take that and understand that Moses wasn't there, okay? But he is where he is when he's writing this. And so God had him to write this down and, and put this here and, and uh, really because also in the context of what happens in the, the narrative, and so then he says in verse 19, again, these are the three sons of Noah. Now, uh, well, let me go back. I, I want to, I didn't, you know, write all this down. So <laughs> I want to go back to verse 18. Um, and these were uh, the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark. That's important too. And uh, really they should, they, God is showing us again that, that, that these three were uh, three men that were saved from a wicked, ungodly world. Okay, they, they came out, and really, ultimately, who did it go back to? Who does it tell us in Genesis chapter 6 that, that God did all this because of a certain man? Who is it? Noah. Noah. And so, really, these three boys should understand, and again, contextually in this narrative, all three of them should have understood that Praise God that they had a godly dad. Amen? A righteous dad. Now, folks, listen. Why is this here? Because we're getting ready to see a godly man sin. A righteous man sin. Right? He's getting ready to commit sin. And so here, it's very important for these three boys, they should have understood, understood growing up under a man like Noah. But guess what? Just a man. Just a man. A man in need of God. You see, folks, listen, we live in a day. Why did I read that earlier passage of Scripture? Because a lot of people blame their sin on their parents. You will never stand before God. I don't care how your parents lived. You're never going to stand before God and say, I'm the way that I am because of what my parents did. It's not happening. But people live that way, don't they? I'm this way because of. No, you're this way because of your heart. And see, we see here Noah, a righteous man. A man that God said that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, okay, and had him build an ark, saved himself and his family. Right? Amen? And so God tells us these three men got off the ark. They were three that were spared, that were saved again. Now, not according to Noah's righteousness, okay? So don't go out here saying I'm saying that. 
But they were blessed to have a godly father that knew God in the midst of a wicked, ungodly. The Bible pretty much tells us probably the worst generation ever. And But we said this generation is going to be just like it. These last days. And so, should have been appreciative, right? Amen. They had a godly dad. They came off the ark. And uh, God, uh, in verse uh, 19, he says, These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. God's also telling us, again, there is just what? One race. The human race. And everybody is going to point back to these three sons, and they're all going to go back to Noah. Okay? That's very important for us to understand. It's not about this race and that race. And, uh, you know, we get into all that and we need to be careful with this stuff. Because, listen, every single person. Now, you, I'm sure that every person in here has had somebody that they can go down in their line and find somebody that's godly. I think they did a thing on, um, wasn't John Dillinger in the same day as uh, uh, Jonathan Edwards? I think they did some kind of genealogy of uh, Dillinger. I think it was Dillinger. It might not have been him. <laughs> it probably wasn't. No. Dillinger was in the 1900s, wasn't he? I, I don't know, folks. Anyway, they did it on one of these, you know, I don't know who it was. Somebody's coming to my mind now, and I know it wasn't him. <laughs> but anyway, it was it was uh, Jonathan Edwards and this other guy, and both of them grew up in the same, and, and man, they looked back on their genealogies, and Wow, what came out of Jonathan Edwards was just amazing. But what came out of this criminal guy was also amazing. The wickedness and the, un, the ungodliness. But you know what? Even this guy over here, uh, which one did I say was over here? This guy over here, the, the wicked guy over here, he was over here. He can't be on the right. You've got to put him back over on the left. And so, anyway, uh, he could still have looked back in his genealogy, although he may look all the way back and through and through, keep going back thousands of years, and da da da, find nobody that was godly. He could trace himself back to Noah and say, I've had an ancestor that was godly in my heritage. Am I telling the truth? Because yes. everybody comes out of them, right? Out of, out of Noah. Correct? And so, yes, no matter, we all can excuse ourselves and say, well, nobody in my family ever lived for God. That's why I never lived for God. Blah, 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 blah. But the bottom line is you can live for God if you choose to live for God and you let God change your heart and your life. Amen? And so we obviously, in verse 20 and 21, there is, there is some time that's going to pass by. And, and, and Noah began to be a husbandman, Okay? So he, he's going to have this these, uh, uh, vineyard. And he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. And was uncovered within his tent. Now, is this the first mention of drunkenness in the Bible? It is, isn't it? Very first mention of drunkenness. Very first mention of drinking at all. Am I, am I correct on that? might help me out in a negative connotation right <laughs> well I mean oh no some people might think that now I know there's an interpretation out there thinking that no this was an accident anybody believe that that Noah accidentally got drunk I mean you might listen don't be afraid to say if you do that's I don't think it's possible, but I mean, it could be, you know, that this happened, that accidentally, that he didn't know, but I think he did know because he was a, this was, you know, he planted this vineyard, he was a husband, and I think he knew what would take place if he drank too much, and I think that he did, and I also believe that if that wasn't the case, I believe God would have told us that, I do, in this situation, I believe God would have said that, you know, Noah drank of the, the wine, he accidentally got drunk, you know. But that's not what happened. What we see here is a man, again, and the reason why I said all the other things about, about Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they knew their dad. 
They knew their dad was a righteous man. They knew that their dad, again, came, that, that, that God said personally. God didn't say Shem, Ham, and Japheth, did he? Is that what he said? Found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He said, no, it didn't. So it was because of their dad, again, in that day, that, that God used him in particular. And so they should have been thankful that they had a dad that, that, that lived this way. And, and so here, th this was not the norm, is what I'm trying to say with Noah. This wasn't something that he, he was a, a, you know, this guy was a righteous man, but yet he, quote unquote, fell into sin, which I don't believe that term in itself. Do y'all believe that? Again, we're, we're trying to participate here a little bit. Do y'all believe this is the first time that Noah drank? I mean, <laughs> yes, sir. I think there's a different process between making grape juice and making wine. Right, there is. And I don't know anything about the wine process. Yeah. But obviously Noah will work on it. <laughs> right. To exactly. Get, to get the wine from mm -hmm. the grapes. Right. Instead of just grape juice. Fermentation so part I, of it. I yeah, I think he knew. I right. mean, I think he was experimenting and right. trying to get the the wine. Right. I think you're correct. I think that's. I think that took place too. I think that this is not something that we, we look at things like this, and I, I don't think Noah fell in into sin. It's not He's something that just quiet. oh well, it just you know no. I think this was a process. I think this. It was a heart process. It was something over time that, that, that Noah, as he went along. Now, again, you can believe whatever you want to believe. The bottom line is Noah did sin. He got drunk. And this is the first mention of, of, of alcohol, and, and it's in a negative connotation. And it's interesting that uh, after he got drunk, the Bible said he was uncovered within his tent. He really had no idea of where he was. You know, because of this. Now, I, I don't know this personally, but they say that, you know, oftentimes when you when you, you drink, you know, it just, you, you, you get warm, you know, inside, you know. And so it causes you to shed your clothes. I was uh, listening to a man, and he said that they, they, they were doing something out somewhere in the cold, and they saw this man. He was just laid out in the street uh, with no clothes on, you know. But they found out, they thought he was dead, you know, but he was just drunk. And evidently, you know, he put the alcohol in and, and started shedding his clothes because he was, it, it made him too warm. But the bottom line is this, Noah, again, he's, he's chosen to do this, okay, and obviously wrong in doing it and uh, sinning against God and really sinning against his family. So he made this choice to choose to, to, to I believe, uh, process this and, and that he became uh, drunk and uh, was uncovered with his tent. And really, you can, there's all kinds of messages that you can put in this, uh, with this. And, you know, drunkenness usually leads to nakedness. Uh, there, there's so much on our college campuses today and, you know, with drunkenness and and uh, nakedness and craziness and, and God help us. That's not the message. Notice this in verse number 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren. Okay? Now, we want to skip down to verse number 24 because we want to talk about the three ideas of what people think this sin was. And, and, and Noah awoke from his wine, verse 24, and knew what his younger son had done unto them, unto him. Now, uh, you can go look. We're not going to look tonight, but you can go. There's, there's, there's three, three uh, interpretations or what people think that this sin that Ham did was. The first one is some, some believe that it, it was a homosexual act. Okay, that he he committed some kind of homosexual act. And uh, with Noah, the second one is that they believe that he might have had a physical or sexual relations with Noah's uh, uh, wife. Okay, now that was a new one on me. And uh, they all get this from Leviticus chapter 18. Now you can look at that uh, on your own. You can read it uh, where it talks about 
uh, the the uncovering of your, your you, you know your father's nakedness, your mother's nakedness, your brother. You can read that whole Leviticus 18. Okay, you can read all about that right there. And every bit of that has does have an idea of some kind of sexual activity. But here's the thing: I believe that we ought to take what the Bible says literally, right? What we have in the context here. And I believe that it's just that he saw his father laid out naked in there, embarrassing himself in this way, and I believe that's what he saw, and I believe that's the literal interpretation of the scriptures. I don't believe the homosexual part, I don't believe that he had sex with his mother and all that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, why? Because he says this, And Ham the father came and saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. Now, I don't believe that he would have run and told his two brethren that he just had a homosexual act with his dad. You might believe that, okay? But I don't believe that for a minute. I don't believe that he would go back and tell his two brothers, hey, guess what? I just had physical relations with your mom. Y'all believe that? No, I don't believe that either. Well, you might believe that. But I don't believe that's what took place. I believe what he saw was his father naked and he ran and told his two brothers as a mockery of his righteous father, seeing him in this condition. And I believe it was because of his own wicked heart. And I believe you can run that out with the, uh, the Canaanites. And the Canaanites always have been God-haters, hater of righteousness, and, and so, that's, that's what's hard with a lot of these, these things that we do types and different things like that. And uh, it doesn't matter what kind of raising you've had, what kind of person you've been under, uh, how much teaching you've had, the great godliness that you might have seen in your life. You still have a heart yourself and can choose to go in the wrong direction. Right? It's just truth. And so Ham made this choice to embarrass his father. What could he have done? And in this situation, this is what we need to think about our own selves at times. When it comes to other people's sin, what could he have done? This obviously, there's no doubt from the scriptures, folks, nobody would ever have known any of this except for Ham and his father. Correct? Yes, this is good preaching to you and me because we're always wanting to go spread somebody else's <coughs> dirty laundry and what they've done. But the Bible says, just read it yesterday, had no idea that God wanted to use it today. I don't know exactly where it is because I didn't go back to look at it. But he said, it's a shame to even speak of those things that people do publicly, out loud. God says we shouldn't do that. So, yes, Ham could have made the choice. He could have done just like Shem and Japheth had done. He could have been embarrassed by this, right? Instead of embellishing in his father's sin and enjoying going and telling his brothers about how shameful his dad is, he could have covered it up. And the Bible says this in the book of Proverbs. It says something that just went right out <laughs> to the right. And uh, love covereth a multitude of sins. This, this sin of hand, folks, listen to me showed such a disrespect for his father and showed such a lack of love and compassion for his, listen to me, righteous father. How do we know he's righteous? Because God told us he was. Amen? He didn't tell us he was sinless. He told us he was righteous. And he was made righteous by God because that's the only way anybody is made righteous. It's not our righteousness. It's not our deeds. Now listen, don't think for a minute that Ham didn't know all this. He come up under his father. He knew what he was doing here. And he's only showing his heart in his lack of respect for his dad. 
Now, I've told you this before. I've made many things, and I've said many things about my dad. Which look, I'm looking back on my life. I, I should have never even mentioned anything about my childhood and my dad and the things that my dad did in the past. That's just the bottom line. I have learned from that. Man, I appreciate my dad. I love my dad. And my relationship with my dad today is wonderful. And I should have never, ever put my dad down. Disrespectful to just the office of a father. We need to be careful. We all need to be careful with these things. We need to, we need to lift people up. Hey, man. We don't need to continually bring their sin back up in their lives. Amen, preacher. God help us. So notice the choice of him was a choice of disrespect, the choice of, uh, of, of showing in his own heart a lack of love for his righteous father. But Shem and Japheth, the Bible said, took a garment and laid upon their shoulders and went backward. Now, now folks, listen, there, there's nowhere in the, in the scriptures that I know of that would tell us that this is what they needed to do in this way, okay? But they went backward purposefully. Why? So they would see nothing of this. They didn't, folks, listen to me. We live in a day of curiosity. That's why we have to be so careful with our young people, with all the media and all the things that they're bombarded with. I've told you this before. Man, we just got to understand this sin nature in the battle that we face. I've said this to you about early Disney. Now, you guys know early Disney, right? Now, Disney puts out all kinds of wickedness today. But early Disney, and almost every... Now, I can't, I can't say this for sure, but Cinderella and these, these different ones, they always had an evil character. Always. Okay? And you watch... If you watch young children, watch these things. I'm talking about you know, six, seven, eight-year-olds, and they're watching this, and, and it used to be, it was like, but it'd be like this. Right? Am I telling the truth? Why? Wow, they, 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 it's the heart. It's the, it's the draw. You say, man, am I drawn to evil? Yes, you are. You got an evil, sinful nature. Every last one of us do. We're drawn to that. Now quit lying to yourself. Everybody within us has an evil, wicked nature. God needs to change us and help us and show us. And so here are these boys. Can you imagine them? They're walking backwards. They don't want to see any of this. What does that show? Number one, it shows a respect for their dad. They don't want to have this image in their minds about their dad. Right? Their dad's a righteous man. And here he's laying up here naked in sin, drunk. Do you, want, do you think you want to have that kind of image of your dad? No, absolutely not. And so here, these two uh, boys, they, they respect their dad. They love their dad. They don't want to embarrass their dad. This, when Ham came running to tell them this, this is not what they wanted to hear. But I'm afraid today, a lot of times, we want to hear the sin and the muck and all the mess people uh, want to talk about other people. God help us. Covered their nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. What a choice, right? They chose to do this. They chose to, 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 to not embarrass their father and even have that image in their minds. And I can tell you, God's going to show us He's going to bless them for that. And He's going to curse not only him, but He's going to curse Canaan. And of course, I've talked to you about that before. I think one of the reasons this is here is because we need to understand why the Canaanites are the way they are. This is really a prophecy. It's not just a punishment, but it's also a prophecy of what was going to take place as far as... Because, listen, you're going to see in the genealogy of Ham, he didn't just have one son. He had four sons. Okay? But only one son was cursed. Now, folks, boy, we don't have time tonight... But you got all kinds of craziness that people get into. Uh, do you realize that, that the Ku Klux Klan uses this, this scripture here to say for white supremacy because of Ham and, 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 and all that and where he come from and, and black race? And, and it's insane. It's so much heresy. It's ridiculous. It has nothing to do with that at all. But anyway. 
Bible says in verse number 25, already read verse 24, Noah awoke from, uh, in verse 24, and, and he saw what the youngest son had done unto him. And I believe that what he did to him is he went out and made a mockery of his dad to his two brothers. He could have kept it secret. He could have not said anything about it. And uh, he could have just covered his dad just the way they did and it had been done. And they'd have been the only ones to know about it. And he said, blessed be the Lord. Oh, no, he says in verse 25. And he said, cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So again, here we see the curse and the, and the blessing of God. Obviously what Noah is, is, is laying out here. But I believe again, because of, 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 of Moses writing this, and, and at that particular time of Moses and writing and the Canaanites were uh, dominant and all these other kind of things and and so again Canaan can think that they're dominating but God says they're going to be servants they're going to be servants but he said he's going to bless Shem he's going to bless and enlarge Japheth and you'll see some of that later on in, in the chapters the main thing that we need to see ourselves is, again, this thing of sin, the seriousness of sin, and understanding no matter how long, how far, how much we've done for God and God's done for us, we can still sin against God. And then we need to see no matter how much somebody that we love and respect and, and we believe that they're righteous, that we need to be careful in how much that we pinpoint and point their sin out and tell everybody else about, did you hear about so-and-so? Did you Listen, we got enough problems ourselves to be pointing out other people's sin. That's just facts. And what we really need to do is try to help people to get out of their sin and cover their sin. We, we need to learn that lesson from Shem and Japheth that these, these uh, sons of Noah, they had no desire to see their dad in this situation. And boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, it's almost like we like to see people fall today. And we enjoy stuff like that. That's insane. We need to be careful. Well, I knew that he was like that or blah, blah, blah. My soul, God help us to lift people up in prayer and uh, not want to know all the bad things. When somebody comes to you with things, say, immediately, maybe you should just say, hey, no, I don't want to. Let's pray for him. Right? Let's pray for him. Let's lift him up to the Lord in prayer. Now, you get rid, rid of a lot of people that way, folks. You won't have to worry about gospelers coming around your way too often when you say, hey, let's pray for them. You're probably not going to hear much gossip from them anymore to, to you. And they're not. I'm just telling you, it ain't going to happen. But we're not willing to do that. You know why? Because we want to hear the gospel. We want to hear these things. We say, oh, man, I, I'm tired of hearing this. No, I'm just telling you, you're tired of hearing it. You'd say, hey, let's pray for them. You're tired of hearing it. Right? But really not. We, we have that evil nature ourselves. Then the Bible goes on and says this, and this is important. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years. And what happened to him? Well, it says it right there. He died. He died. Just like every, every other sinner every other righteous man he died we're all going to die no matter how long we live we're going to die we're all in need of the Savior and every person that's around us is in need of the Savior and you and I need to be more soul conscious understanding no matter what people do to us no matter how bad of sinners they might be they need Jesus they don't need our our, our, our condemnation and all these. Other. Now, again, they are condemned. I understand. They need the truth from the Word of God. But let God's Spirit and let God's Word do the work in their hearts and lives to show them their condemnation, to show them where they are. But let them see in you somebody that's different. Somebody that's not trying to embarrass them and, and, and throw out their sin, but trying to help them come to the Savior. God help us all learn a lesson from 
these particular characters in the scriptures. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for who you are. Father, we pray that we'd be more like Shem and Japheth. And we would not be people that are trying to embarrass people in their sin, but we're trying to, uh, as uh, you said there in, in Galatians, uh, through the Apostle Paul, by your Spirit, that um, when we see a person in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. But being careful with meekness that we might not, uh, uh, again, fall into the same sin ourselves. Father, teach us, Lord, uh, again, that uh, we all have the old nature, the old wicked heart. Thankful to you that you gave us a new heart and made us a new man. And, uh, Lord, we can live after that. We don't have to live in sin. We don't have to live in, in, in sensuality and, and, and all these other things, Father. We can live and we can be guided by your Spirit. And, uh, we just pray, dear God, that you help us, Lord, not to, uh, again, even though we have uh, Ham's sin nature, that we would not yield to our old man, that we yield our instruments unto God. And Father, allow your work in our hearts and lives. Teach us, Father, daily need. Thank you again for this opportunity to preach your word. Father, I pray that we've all learned some things here tonight and that we go home filled, thrilled, and willed to do exactly what you want us to do. I pray this in Christ's wonderful name and for his sake. All God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.